On this week's boiler tip, we're going to take a look at some of the fireside components of boilers. Now these, this water tube boiler we've got open up for inspection this week because we're doing a 301 class here at Boiler U. And this particular video we're going to look at the tube ends because what we have are a variety of different ends at the tube sheet for the fire tubes coming through. And we've got two examples at the back of this boiler and we'll look at the back of another one. The first example we're going to look at is a welded tube end. And the idea of a welded tube end is not to form the actual, actual pressure vessel seal. In all tube installations, the seal to prevent pressure liquid steam from coming out is done by rolling the tube. But welding the tube end gives us a little bit a uh, better fixture of the tube so it's less prone to move forward and backwards uh, in the tube sheet with thermal expansion and contraction. So the weld is in a way protecting the end of the tube because it gives us a thermal bridge from the tube that sticks out in that high temperature zone to the main tube sheet. So we've got a path of transfer for heat from the gases to the water and that keeps that tube end from overheating and cracking. Um, and that's also the nature of a beaded tube end. A beaded tube end is rolled first, but then a chisel type tool or a rotary type tool is used to fold the end of that tube once again against the tube sheet. So that gives us heat transfer. So when we've got a boiler open for inspection, we're looking for cracking on welded tube sheets look for chemical indication, mineral indication, and on a beaded tube sheet, we're looking for movement. So when that was beaded, that's pressed against the tube sheet, and it should be against the tube sheet. If you see a significant gap between that beaded over edge and the tube sheet, you've had thermal expansion and contraction that's pushed that in away. So on the back of this pass, where the main flue gases turn and come back, to this end, we have a beaded tube end like we saw on the Victory earlier. Um, but since this is on the outlet of the second pass and the beginning of the third pass, the flue gas temperatures here are not high enough to actually damage the end of these tubes. So we just use a simple flare. So this tube is rolled to form our seal and then flared. The flare is essentially there to anchor the tube so that if there's expansion and contraction, it can't be pulled or pushed uh, through the tube sheet. The bead on one end and the flare on the other lock that tube between the two tube sheets. Um, basically, if we've just got flared ends, we're looking for indications of leakage once again. Chemicals or minerals evident in that tube.